Hi, welcome to another video. So this one's going to be a quickie about how to get pictures from your Panasonic HCX1000 onto your PC or not how to get them onto the PC but how to actually view them. So I bought this a few weeks ago from Kamals and Cameras down in Wales. Fantastic shop, fantastic camera or fantastic video camera. I must say before I forget with reference to taking photographs set up one of the user buttons which I'll set user 1 press a button, takes a snapshot, it's actually pretty piss poor. Compared to this X920 that's videoing me now, that takes nice photos. This um, photos, oh, may as well throw them away. It's actually better to actually play the video back using Panasonic software and capture a still. So this is a 4K video playing in the background. So I've been messing out with my PC for days. It's an Intel Xeon, I've got a note here somewhere. Intel Xeon 1.3 gigs, uh, it's like a high-end i5. This is just me playing about in the garden. It's, it was uh, my granddaughter's birthday a few days ago. So you see it's playing nice and smooth. Now first of all, in my PC, I had this cheap little video card. It was one of the most powerful without a fan. This is a GTX 720. Uh, so obviously quiet because there's no fan. Uh, didn't have to do a lot other than give me pictures on a you know monitor, TV screen. So DVI, HDMI, and VGA. So I got this 4K camera and I started running into trouble. This wouldn't play 4K video, certainly not full screen. Uh, so I went and saw a friend who's a bit of a computer wizard. And I've just returned today, after messing about for a good 24 hours, just returned a GTX uh, 670. It was an older generation, just wouldn't play the videos. It would play them using the HD writer by Panasonic, play them, but it was a stumble and jerky, pretty crap. I wasn't, uh, wasn't impressed. But I've just got back today, a short while ago, and put in a GTX 750. So the 750 is later than the 670, although the 670 has got more CUDA cores, it's meant to be more powerful than the 750. The 750 is a newer model, um, less CUDA cores, uh, but is up to the job. So why do I keep on mentioning CUDA cores? Well, two things. If you read the internet, especially by NVIDIA, CUDA cores are the cores inside the GPU, so graphics processing, chip uh, cores that are able to do parallel processing and I've just had a quick read up what scientists and medical workers and all that sort of stuff they're utilizing the immense power of the GPUs to get them to do some some real processing. Now the GTX 670 had over a thousand CUDA cores this 750 has only got just over 512 but because the 750 is new, it plays full, full size video. This is actually 4K, but being rendered on a normal HD monitor. So CUDA cores, this little 720 had a hundred and something. If you go into the Panasonic HD writer, I'll show you. So it actually got a measurement and it will, it will do some processing using the GPU, so graphics processor unit. Uh, do some processing with it, with the CUDA cores enabled and then disabled. This little 47 pound card, there was no difference, took 25 seconds to do uh, a task. This earlier one I've had years ago, this hasn't got NVIDIA chipset, so it's got no CUDA cores, so you know, wouldn't the, the software couldn't do the measurement. If you're buying a video card, or graphics card, and you want it to do some heavy processing, go for NVIDIA. So, if I, so I'm running Windows 7 64 bit. So if I love, reduce this 4K video just to obviously a small screen. This is uploading video to YouTube as we speak. Now, what used to happen when I'd put on this 4K video, try and run through it, see the, uh, the result, this CPU usage was up at 100%. It was just maxing out. And yeah, the whole PC could not cope with a 4K video. But with this GTX 750, 512 CUDA cores or something like that, that the CPU is down to one and three percent. 
So you th these CUDA cores by NVIDIA, designed by NVIDIA and invented by NVIDIA, they're taking away all the processing from the CPU. CPU sitting there twiddling its thumbs and the GPU is doing all the work. So consequently, my PC is well up to the job of uploading videos to YouTube, watching this video while doing some other tasks in the background. It's absolutely brilliant. So the 750 is currently £100. If you can afford a Titan, some of the Titan, uh, NVIDIA Titan graphics cards have got over 2,000 uh, CUDA cores. So that's enough about CUDA cores so, and 4K video. So to summarize, if you've got a 4K camera and you're struggling to play 4K video, um, get yourself a decent graphics card Yeah, from £100 upwards. Make sure it's a modern one. Don't go and get a second hand one like I did initially. I still, the 670 is still over hundred pound because it's meant to be better, but because of the older chipset, the older software, it just, you couldn't get the CUDA cores to do their job. So I strongly recommend buy a modern graphics card. Yeah, you can shop on eBay if uh, someone's selling a modern one. Yeah, go ahead and get it. If you can afford a Titan, get a Titan. I can't afford a Titan, so I just bought the 750. Wondered if it'd be good enough, and the results speak for themselves. I've actually turned down the frame rate, uh, which is a setting in this uh, Panasonic software, just so I can you know, watch the pictures full screen and render them quicker. And talking of rendering, using the HD software, the Panasonic HD software, when you have CUDA cores, tick a little box, it will render the whole video faster. But what I didn't realize, just using this CPU uh, Windows Task Manager and performance, that cheap little 100 pound video card is taking all the load of my CPU. That's the RAM I upgraded from four, uh, four gigs to eight gigs of RAM, uh, sitting at 3.44. Look at it, it's just CPU usage history. So that's, as I say, the 3.1 gig Xeon it's got four cores, and you can see they're idle because the GPU, graphics processor unit, is doing all the work. Fantastic. My hat's off to NVIDIA. So, yeah, back to the HTX 1000. If you want to take photographs, forget it. I had to sell my Nikon to get to this, so I'm used to, like, high-quality pictures. Yeah, for those of you who see my other videos, I have the Nikon 7100. Uh, and some superb um, f2.8 lenses but they're all gone so I could afford this but I'm really impressed with the high picture quality whether it's HD or 4k and if you haven't seen my other videos records 4k records 4k and ultra HD and HD HD at 200 megabits a second uh, 4k uh, and Ultra HD 150 megabits a second, 50 and 60p, you have 50 and 60 frames per second, progressive scan. So, fantastic camera. Now I've got a video card to view the footage. This little T47 pound card, that's good for displaying HD video and nothing else. It's got no additional power really to help the CPU with any work. But this 750, totally different story. Right, so that's the website at the top on Google Chrome, geforce.co.uk, and this is a video card I've just got just an hour ago. So, the overview performance compares it to all our other cars, features, specifications, GTX 750, CPU, engine speed, CUDA cores, so that's 512. Have a look on the internet or GeForce have, have got a page on these CUDA cores and it's all about parallel processing. Um, the CPU does the normal sequential work and passes off all the difficult complex stuff to the, um, yeah, that's a, a simple analogy, but passes a difficult task to the GPU, graphics processor unit. Uh, and the, presumably the more cores the graphics card has got, the more able it is to do some work, uh, to do additional work. So this CUDA cores 512, 
base clock megahertz 1020 boost clock so it's slightly overclock 1085 now to reiterate and I can't emphasize enough the 670 was superior in fact I'll find it for you desktop GPUs GPU series I normally make the mistake and I haven't got this in view so 600 so I've just taken out the 670 now this, there it is 670 click on that specifications make sure you review yes you are Right, there we are. So this is the video card I've had in this PC for a good day, and I was running around in circles. My video playing software would not play 4K video, it just kept on, it was jerky and stumbling all over the place. But look, so cores, 1,344. Graphics clock speed, so that, look, you can see the base clock is actually a touch slower than the 750, but look, CUDA cores, 1344, this one in my machine now has only got 512, so you would think that has got to be better, hasn't it? But no, because the 750s have got a current and modern chipset, uh, it actually, with the software I've got, it outperforms this older 670. Took the 670 back, picked up the 750, which is actually cheaper than a 95 pound new, uh, and it outperforms the 670. So don't get an old graphics card. Don't. You'll be um, throwing good money after bad. So have a read up on CUDA cores. It's all about parallel processing and getting the GPU to do the task. So now you're closer to the PC. Look at that. See, I'm uploading to YouTube, but the CPU was always sitting 40, 50% or, or thereabouts. And, so, and when I played a video, it went up to 100% maxed out. And I've got a crappy picture, so let's have a look. This is um, Panasonic software. Well, I just, this is, um, so you can see that's 4K. Now this would be jerky and not smooth. Right, so with this 4K video playing, just a small screen, pull up the CPU data, it's still idle because the GPU is doing all the work. Fantastic. Obviously, you, yeah, it goes up and down sometimes, but the CPU still has to do some work. There's the four cores of the Xeon processor. And you can see it's looks idle, fantastic. And the proof is in the pudding is playing that. So if I shut this down for a second, actually there it was there's a video I rendered earlier this afternoon. I was playing about with the focus, the manual focus on this camera. So if I go to full screen. superb color clarity and representation definition on this HCX 1000 this is what I'm actually uploading to YouTube behind the scenes as we speak so look we've got this full uh, size picture no stumbling no plan about this is an HD writer and it's rendered in HD writer and those transitions between one part of the video and another they're an HD writer. It takes a bit to get, get used to HD writer compared to other uh, rendering software. But hopefully this HD camera will be able to pick out the clarity on these colors. But this was obviously filmed with this 4K camera. So unfortunately I can't get up the CPU usage when I'm playing on the full screen, but pull that back up. But you can see there, the CPU is doing nothing and it was up at 100%. So invest in a new modern 
NVIDIA. It's got to be NVIDIA to get the CUDA cores. So if I, enough about CUDA cores for, for now, if I shut this down. So if this is specifically if you've got a Panasonic uh, video camera and a modern one that uses this HD Riser XE2 or later. Up the top here, if you haven't experimented already, tools, settings. Right, so this is the important bit. Go to general. So that if you're American or British, European, the NVIDIA CUDA. So until the last couple of days, didn't really understand this uh, and it didn't do anything, didn't make any difference with my old video card. But so if I click measurement, so I'll let this happen in real time. Bearing in mind, I'm still uploading the video to YouTube. These bits are open in the background. Internet Explorer is also open. I'll let you see the result of this. This is what I mentioned earlier. This is measurement. It lets the GPU do, a, do some work and compares the difference. So now with my baby 47 pound card, which has got, I don't know, 150 or thereabouts CUDA cores, didn't make any difference. The, the system ran and it took 25 seconds to do something with the CUDA cores disabled and 25 seconds to do something with them enabled. So this wasn't up to the job. But look at this 750 and I've got other tasks running. Hardware acceleration disabled, took 21 seconds. Previously I had 25. Hardware acceleration enabled, took 14 seconds. And that actually speeds up when the, when the uh, CPU and GPU is doing nothing at all. So that's the advantage of getting an NVIDIA graphics card with CUDA cores. I strongly recommend it, especially if you've got Panasonic software. Fantastic to NVIDIA. Absolutely brilliant. I thought I was going to have to get a, you know, a, a faster PC, you know, like a high-end i7. But no, just invested a decent graphics card. Uh, you, can, you saw the CPU is sitting there twiddling its thumbs. If only I had the money to buy a Titan that started at sort of you know, 350, 400 pound all the way up to a thousand pound. Right, cancel that. Actually, before I forget, in case you're not familiar, or in case you're thinking about getting an HCX 1000, so playback. Was this is the playback menu. If your PC is not up to the job, you can play there. It plays everything at the, you know the full high resolution with this HD or 4K. If you click this measurement, this analyzes your PC, but only the PC. So you can pause this if you want to watch it later, but the PC, I've read this a hundred times, an evaluation of your computer indicated that it has enough processing performance for playback. However, it didn't. Had enough for playback, but a jerky picture. But, and it says it doesn't look at the graphics card and settings, all that sort of stuff, and in sp uh, specifically turning off aero and all the fancy graphics on Windows desktop like this transparent bar down the bottom, but it didn't make any difference. If you put the graphics on Windows 7 to basic, I still had a jerky picture. So again, back to the emphasis on video cards, get a decent NVIDIA graphics card, uh, a modern one. I recommend the 750 at least. That CUDA. Parallel computing platform.
and you can find that information nvidia.com have a read really interesting so final word about high spec cameras and fast SD cards another thing I want to reiterate in case you haven't seen the other videos I've started buying all my cards from Kamada cameras because I can guarantee they're genuine cards not fakes and I've been buying loads of these the 1000 speed 64 gig $39.99 at the moment but look it's 150 megabits a second and that is fine for this 4k video camera back to buy I've taken one out I've put it in this 920 that's filming me at the moment so you can see it's a newer more modern card it's got extra contacts on the back HDXC or something it's called 64 gig Lexar 150 megabits a second I tried this Kingston just to see what it would do this is just a regular class 1 it's at about 30 megabits a second now this 4k camera would start recording and within about 5-6 seconds it would come up with a message writing to card <laughs> Uh, and then stop recording because it's got to write the data to it uh, and it kept on doing that so these slower cards do work but only for a matter of seconds so invest in decent memory cards finally with reference to playing videos actually this uh, this photo this is a snapshot of a 4K 25 frame progressive scan snapshot you've taken of a, well, some rain bouncing off a leaf so if you capture and pause the video and take a still shot yeah they're usable pictures nothing like my Nikon and nothing like the actual photograph function uh, on this camera which is yeah photography absolute rubbish I have to say this X920 is far better for photos the X920 also has a flash. Right, so playing playing videos, and why this all these uh, these GPU processing came into play, I downloaded this VLC media player and another one, but I've got another player as well. But this media player, if I show you a video, right, so this video I took the other day, right click, open with. VLC media player so I recommend get VLC media player if you've got a good graphics card that plays 4k videos now the other day and up until this afternoon this PC would not play this it was you know, jerky I could go and make a coffee and come back it might have moved on to the next frame if you've got VLC media player if I pause this important tools preferences input and output codex my friend Elias told me about that so if you need a, a fast PC drop us a, a message and I'll put you on to Elias he can sort you out fast gaming PC or graphics card if you need one right if you've got the graphics card look hardware accelerated decoding so hardware mean in the GPU you, if you enable this bit direct X video acceleration and the other options are automatic and disable by default it's disabled get your decent video card enable that save come out if you're saving for the first time and that's it and VLC player will play a nice 4k image it's obviously rendering it down to high definition hopefully this camera is doing this video justice it's actually a 4k video I was messing about with a manual focus out in the garden and looking at some red roses on my screen actually it looks superb by the time this is rendered and uploaded to YouTube it's probably going to be a bit naff but there you go so VLC player plays 4k video when you've got a good graphics card it played them with this but stumbled and 
jittered all over the place. Unfortunately, I fitted the you know the 750 video card. Otherwise, I'd like to show you. This is an old video card with no. It's, it's this is a Radeon, which is a good video card for just playing video games, simple games. But I'm not a games man. But yeah, with regards to GPU being able to do something else, no little cars like this, uh, not made not made by uh, GeForce or don't have the Nvidia chipset. They're not capable of doing anything. Hopefully I've explained everything. Really, so VLC player. I'll go about. So VLC media player. So maybe because this is latest software by Terry Patchett. Um, as I say, plays 4K, all the definitions. Maybe because this is late software, it doesn't really recognize or work with uh, the 670 is just not compatible, but you saw the 670's got more cores than the 750, but the 750 works like a treat, the 670, absolute rubbish. So be careful what you're buying, get a modern card from a modern shop, make sure you go to a decent, reputable supplier, and you should have success like I have. So hopefully you've, you've learned something. This has taken me days and days to you know, get my system to work with this 4K camera. Um, I imagine with any 4K uh, or any decent camera with a high bit rate, you're going to be running into the same sort of trouble. So hopefully this video will give you advice on video cards, what type to buy. Uh, and it seems that the only one that you, you're going to benefit of is uh, a video card with an, uh, an NVIDIA chipset uh, with the CUDA cores. But make sure it's modern because my 670, although superior, didn't work is inferior to this more modern 750. Uh, you saw the spec, the 7, 750 has less cores than the 670, yet the 750 performs, and take my word for it, the 670 did not perform. You know, it's like having this cheap 20 pound garden. Um, so yeah, so it's information on the video cards, CUDA cores, GPU processing, you've seen my computer, my processor is 3.1 gig Xeon, like a high-end i5. It's sitting there twiddling its thumbs because my fantastic 750 is doing all the work. So I don't need a PC anymore, I don't need a new PC. Just, uh, you know, maybe save up some few, uh, a few pounds and maybe treat myself to a Titan. Fantastic. That's, uh, that's all I can say about um, this camera and getting yeah, getting the video to play on a PC. Uh, if you want a review of this camera, yeah, there's, there's plenty of people that have done reviews. Uh, I like the camera, I like the high data rate, it gives me sharp images, beautiful color, when I can find something with some color. Uh, but with reference to the photographs, appalling. Uh, the sounds, Dolby Digital 5.1 surround, beautiful. Uh, lovely camera, lovely piece of kit, but forget the photographs. Uh, and, you know, getting back to my PC, when I tried to play the videos, I thought, oh, what have I done? I now need another PC. But no, look into it. If you've got a, a, a semi-decent processor, just look, at for, just look for a decent video card with an NVIDIA chipset and CUDA cores. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been informative. Thank you very much. Bye.